so it's another video and got some things happening first of all upgraded the poster there uh, yeah you can see got my music blog on there check it out and here we've got a really old alarm clock and it doesn't want to work for some reason I've had this for ages um, one of my earlier things and um, over the time I've been trying to get it to work and I started off with my slightly worse tactics about repairing which evolved, I don't know, I'm not going to talk about it but hopefully with our newfound knowledge we can hopefully get this to some ticking happening that's that um, it's, I think it's um, a Thomas Ernst Haller clock and that's going by the shape of the movement plates which I found on that German website I'm not going to post a link because I've done it like loads of other times and bad news I'm afraid this electric metamet clock in the background um, decided to stop working uh, I don't know why that was although it has done it before and I think it's down to the little it's got a little function on the back that if you twist it it'll tick I don't know really what the purpose of that is, to be honest, because it's an electric clock and it doesn't need to tick. But if you want it to tick, then you can make it tick. And I think that's probably jamming up the rotor a little bit. So I'm not going to do that on camera, I don't think. But um, hopefully by the next video I'll get that sorted out. So this is the object concerning... I don't know what to say there. This is the one we're looking at today. So... Let's give it a quick example of what I'm talking about. Now it's pretty much fully wound up, but it ticks for a bit. It's got a um, second dial at the bottom. It's going to run for a lot now, now I talk now I mention it. But believe me, it'll stop for some reason. Now you can hear it's really out of beep now. I don't know if you can hear the ticking from here. There we go, it stopped at pretty much exactly um, 60 seconds. So, let's take it apart. So I'm just going to start by getting these off. Now, this clock, I think, is a sort of same thing that Gregorio Productions um, came across in his first Alarming Antiques episode because there was the face and back of one of these drum clocks so maybe uh, I don't know maybe it's similar in some way I don't know how old it is I think it's from like 1910 or something but I don't know there's no dating on it that I found out. I'll show the movement in a second. But first, you can see the back stamped out of brass, but it's got a nice um, turned finish on the back, and it just pops into there with these little nubs. And you can see the movement here. Now, I have actually replaced this. Uh, myself this um, regulator because the original one someone had snapped off the little hook that goes around the hairspring but other than that it hasn't changed much and I got this off another clock which I believe to be a Haller well I know that one is but I don't know if this one is and that is a Beetle alarm clock and it's a slightly later version of this from the 30s I think but it's got um, a, one of those pegs at the back instead of a bell on the top now this situation with the um, alarm uh, tensioning is something I believe I can sort out now because I've got a spare little um, bush for the um, alarm shaft instead of having the actual uh, knob on the back pressing the spring together 
So hopefully we can sort that out. If we can just unscrew the bell on top. That's a thing, that's a thing. All of this I did myself. Because it's all in pieces when I got this. The movement was out. I don't even know if this case is original. This glass isn't because I got this off the other haller. You can see I've made um, a little bit of a catch here. But I might replace that because it's too short. And also it's made out of spring. This is stiff. Another thing is, this hammer, uh, I think it's this clock, I replaced the hammer head on this and it's from a Russian alarm clock. Oops, that fell on the floor. Let me just get that. It's from a Russian alarm clock uh, and it seems to do the job. It's got these nice little feet on there. Now unfortunately you can't really remove this hammer so um, you have to sort of get it out by doing this sort of sort of thing, like that. A bit weird, and somehow getting that out. But that worked actually. So we've got the movement, and we've got the um, uh, sort of silvery. I think it's nickel plated outside with a brass spacer and the glass. No uh, decoration on the bezel there, it seems to be all one piece that's just been turned around into a drum. So here we've got the movement, now the springs all wound up, so I'll first off take off the hands, you can see someone's oily fingers has been on this before, as well as mine. This little seconds hand and this alarm hand. Ooh. You can see I've blue tacked this face on. I will replace that with some little pins because that's what it used to have originally. I think I might have lost them. And you can also see what looks like 15 written in pencil. Maybe it's from 1915. Who knows? Next thing we've got to do is remove this, um, I like the Veglia, which I think is actually pronounced Veglia, I think, from Google Translate. So I got that wrong, but oh well. And we've got to get this frame off. I replaced that screw because it was missing, but it's definitely the wrong kind. Although it does help hold the mainspring out of the way of the balance wheel. Not balance wheel, escape wheel. Because that's a problem with this clock. When the springs expand um, as it runs down, they collide with the escape wheel on that side and the alarm spring collides with this wheel on this side. Which means it doesn't long run for long at all. I don't know what we can do about that because the later one they must have thought about that and improved it because that actually does have little pegs sticking out the plates. But this one seems to be an early version. See the balance wheel very sluggishly ticking. And I think that worn down bit there might be to blame. But it doesn't look like it's worn down enough to do such a massive amount of wear um, slowing down. So I'm just going to have another closer look at this movement, get it apart and look at all the pieces individually and see if maybe there's a culprit in there elsewhere. So I'll let down the power until usually the one with a groove in it is the alarm so I'll just put this on this side and indeed it is in fact the time so that's good. Actually I'll probably, um, cause it's quite a heavy spring, it's quite a delicate hairspring I'll uh, take the hairspring out first. Now what I've done is because the regulator uh, on the older, on this original movement had the regulator slit on this side, I've actually t 
taken off the hairspring and put it on backwards so that it turns in the opposite direction which means that this slot which is at the bottom now is now going to be correctly on the um, stud side so I'll just get that out bit of a uh, bit of an annoying thing I'll just get my tweezers these is you can see there's a lot of um, spare hairspring. Spare spring? There's a lot of spare spring in there. So I'll have to figure out why that is and maybe reduce that because I don't think any clock should have this much spare hairspring coming out the tail of it. It doesn't seem right, you know? Unless it was running super fast, I can't remember. Get this out of there. There we go. And now for the undoing. Doing. These are annoying. The ones with the screws are much better because they're easy. Oops. And there goes. So this could be one of the culprits having blunted tips. I'll just zoom in on there. Uh, so what have we got here? These tips actually look... They're not very steep angles, that's what it is, I think. Uh, and I think they are quite sharp. But they are quite shallow angles. But I think that's okay, actually. So I'll just take the balance cups as well. And I'll clean this whole thing anyway. So to let down the power up the spring, as we all know, is something that you should do. You've got to find the click, which is usually on the complete wrong side of the movement. But luckily it's quite reachable today. Also, I must have put some mega spring inside this, because this is super stiff. Because I remember when I got this, and it arrived in its bag of bits, both of the springs were broken and tied up with bits of string and unfortunately I have got into a predicament where um, the uh, click is oh, thank god for that the um, click was sort of pushed over too far and it wouldn't do its thing so I seem to be careful with this one I don't want to break my fingers off. I know you can't see this, but I think... Ooh, what was that? That was hard. Something went pang and it hit my fingertip. I think it must have skipped a tooth. So I've got to be super careful. Yeah, these springs, I don't know what on earth I put inside this thing, but these springs are far too powerful for their own good. What I might have to do actually is because I think the um, uh, click spring is a bit bent from when it went over the edge. It's not going fully into its holes again, so that's a bit of a problem, and I'll have to deal with that somehow. fishy. Okay, I think I've got that pretty safely in that notch. You probably can't see a thing about this, to be honest, because the lighting's weird. I haven't done the lighting yet, I need to do that. I'll do that next time. You can see these teeth look pretty intact as well. But you can see that it's a big spring. I probably put that in there because I didn't think there was enough power in it because it wasn't going too far. So I'll just take this off as well, get better access to it. Oops. I 
get this pin out of the um what's the name? Right, I got that thing. Uh, what's next? Ooh. I see the alarm works. Uh, I think one of the main problems is bent plates, to be honest with this. I don't know. Anyway, back to the unwinding. Dangerous. That's no, okay. I don't want this to be a video where I break my finger. It's something I haven't done yet. Okay. Looking good so far. Springs are expanding. That's a good sign. I don't think it's that much of a powerful spring, to be honest. I think it's just really big. Get that little washer off there before it goes missing. Yeah, I think it's just a big spring. I don't think it's particularly powerful. Which means if we do get this sorted out, it will go pretty, pretty well. Or at least we hope, anyway. I'm never used to let down springs like this. I always used to um, just uh, undo the plates a little bit and take the pallet out, but now I feel this is a much better way to do it. And I think it is. So I'll do this. I've been doing this for a while now. Okay, I think we're nearly there. Okay, I think we're pretty much expanded now. So that's good. Just return this clip to its natural position. So now I think it's safe to take the movement apart and inspect every piece individually. I think the biggest culprit with this will probably be a bent um, pivot or something like that. Quite often that is a big killer of uh, momentum in a clock. Causes a lot of friction. And they can be fixed if you're gentle. Okay, this is still going to expand a little bit, but hopefully not explode. There we go. So, we've got the top plate here. And we can see that there is a bit of a bend in these plates. So I'll just sort that out now. I'll get this uh, regulator off. So 
well it oops, sits flat on the desk. Yeah, that's definitely bent. Just do that. Okay. I think I've pretty much got it now. But if that's, if this plate is bent, that's not going to help things at all. Because it means the pivot holes might be slightly bent as well. And everything will be slightly misaligned. But I think we've got it now. Maybe a little quick tweak. Like that. Okay. And just inspect everything else. This colossal spring. Bit of dirt on there, I'll clean that off. Yeah, a bit of dirt, but that's nothing nothing to worry about really. How about this. Everything's good. Actually this pallet's in great condition. Hmm. I'm kinda hoping I do find a bent pivot actually, because that means we've pretty much found out the problem, but I they all seem to be pretty good. But what I will do is what I do sometimes do, and that's just take the springs out, take the escapement out, and just have a few of the wheels which I can roll around with my finger, and see if any of them are slightly uh, jumpily or something. I'll just do that now. Now this should run really smoothly. Just get this all lined up. Yeah, one of these wheels is actually off center a little bit, that bottom one. You probably can't see it. But to me, it looks a little bit off center. Oh no, it's not, it's actually just bent this way. I'll pull that apart again. Put another nut on. This uh, thingy seems a bit um, floppy. Tension in this center rubber. I think I can sort that out. I'll also need to drive down this uh, pinion a bit more, which I'll do now off camera. So I've actually driven down that um, pinion a bit more the hammer and a couple of pliers and what I found out is it's still too loose on the tension there but it's rubbing up against the um, plate because it's slightly bent in the middle so there's a bend in the back plate or bottom plate as well or front plate this is the front plate so I'll just sort that out
How did I get this out? Well, because it was floppy before, I guess. Right, I'll leave that in. So I was just trying to sort this out for a minute. So I straightened that out. Uh, but I've also got to fix this tension. And I think the way to do that would be to press down on this whilst bending those spring leaves a little bit. So let's try that now. Okay, that seemed to have worked a bit. A bit better. I'll just try that again. Because what it does is it pushes the uh, spring away from the actual thing. And also in doing so I can bend up these edges of the wheel which actually look like they're a bit bent which means there's more force on them and that means yep the tension is slightly better so hopefully we could have fixed that now, I've been inspecting the parts so I'll just do that now just checking for any bits of wear or anything on them I've actually found out that the motion work is all bent uh, I don't know why but um, that's easy to fix and I think that might have done something to stop it maybe, I don't know ok that's good is there anything else that might have stopped the clock? bit of a mystery this isn't it nothing that points out really what could have caused it to stop I'm just uh, sticking the pegs of this in some blue tack for a bit which helps remove all the bits of dirt Hopefully that will make a bit of a difference. Yeah. Hmm. Just looking around to see anything. Yeah, I don't know about this. It's a bit of a mystery, isn't it? Well, it's getting quite a long video, so I'll stop it here. And uh, hopefully by the next one, I would have at least made some progress in figuring out why this isn't working.